My name is Matt Chosas. I'm an application development chemist within Performance Chemicals Division of NatureWorks. I'm going to tell you a little bit about NatureWorks and what NatureWorks is known for, the technology, and uh, some of the new areas that NatureWorks is innovating into, one of which is the subject of my talk today, lactide polyester resins as tachifiers in ethylene vinyl acetate hot melt adhesive applications. NatureWorks was founded upon an idea, a project within Cargill in the late 1980s that was focused on production of polylactic acid, or PLA, and developing applications for those materials. Today, NatureWorks is one of the world's largest polylactic acid, is, is the world's largest polylactic acid producer. There's a production facility in Blair, Nebraska as well as a dedicated R&D facility and case lab in Minnetonka, Minnesota. As the world's largest producer of polylactic acid, NatureWorks has several established global market channels. And I'm going to talk a little bit about those areas that NatureWorks is known for. Uh, NatureWorks is also still 50% owned by Cargill today. So NatureWorks is based upon polylactic acid technology. The resins that NatureWorks is established in are of a high molecular weight, high viscosity, semi-crystalline nature. These materials are designed to be injection molded, formed into sheets, films, fibers, suitable for applications such as 3D printing, food service wear, food packaging, and other household goods. NatureWorks, where NatureWorks is innovating and building upon that core technology is in a lower molecular weight, lower viscosity, amorphous PLA material, more suitable for applications such as coatings, adhesives, and other functional intermediates. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the, these two business divisions uh, by getting into the chemistry behind them. NatureWorks is based upon a lactide platform, a lactide technology platform, where we have lactic acid on the far left here coming in from Cargill by a fermentation route. Lactic acid is combined, two, two, two molecules of lactic acid are combined and then dehydrated to form a lactide molecule. Lactide is then put through a ring opening process to produce our PLA resins. This is our established business channel where we're innovating and building upon that technology is in, again, a lower viscosity, lower molecular weight, amorphous character material, more suitable for applications such as polyols. Some of these materials are designated as polyols, and that's suitable for acrylate type applications or polyurethane type applications, reactive in nature. Where we also have um, materials, they can be designated as resins that are more suitable for non-reactive type applications, solvent-borne adhesives, solvent-borne coatings, and hot melt adhesives. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the difference between the polyols and the resins that we offer by getting into the chemistry. If you focus on the react reaction scheme on the bottom right here, again, we have our lactide molecule, and that's going to be combined with a initiator molecule. This could be, um, it's going to be a functional molecule. It could be a diol. It could be a triol. There, we can, we can vary the, the chain length of that initiator molecule. This is a, this is a tunable system. We can, we can get a variety of properties out of it uh, that those those reactants are put through a ring opening polymerization to form the polymeric structure on the bottom. And I want to highlight the repeat unit has a high degree of ester concentration. That makes for a very polar molecule, as well as hydroxyl groups on the ends that are reactive 
towards um, uh, our reactive in, in that they are suitable for 1K reactive hot melt adhesive systems. There's more information online for this, uh, uh, this side of our technology, and, uh, or you can talk to one of us, and there's also going to be a future talk on the polyol side of our business. Using the same reaction scheme, we can control our stoichiometry of the lactide and build our chain length further. And what that does is we're, we're relying then less on the reactive nature of the end groups and more on that, that polymer itself. And when we do that, um, we see materials that are more suitable for uh, solvent borne type ad adhesive application. Um, these materials, again, have, uh, have a lot of ester groups per repeat unit. That makes them uh, very soluble in ethyl acetate, toluene, MEK, um, to very high solids, high percent solids, sometimes in, in as high as 50 percent solids loading in these systems. Again, these are, these are tunable, uh, tunable systems by controlling the stoichiometry. Taking these same resins, um, we are able to apply them also in, as tackifiers in hot melt adhesive systems. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. This table is just to highlight the, TG, the range of glass transition temperatures that we are able to hit with this system, as well as the range of viscosities that we're able to achieve. Again, highlighting the customizable nature of, this, of these resin systems, um, we're able to target a range of viscosities, range of TGs. I'm going to be focusing on the two lower viscosity materials here um, for the hot melt adhesive systems. Again, focusing on the polymeric structure of, of our polylactic acid polymer. We have a high concentration of ester groups per repeat unit that gives a very highly polar molecule. And to highlight that, I have a list of Hansen solubility parameters here with some common polymers. Starting at the top here, we have polyethylene, one of the more nonpolar uh, examples. And moving down to polystyrene, slightly more polar. PMMA, even more polar. PBOH, and then PLA kind of falls in that, in the range of the, the higher polarity materials. Having a very large uh, contribution from the dipole moment, Hansen solubility parameter. Where this comes into play, where this is important in hot melt adhesives is in compatibility with other materials and in formulating. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about uh, the, the formulation that we went through. So. In this instance, we chose a base resin, uh, ethylene vinyl acetate resin of a high vinyl acetate content, 80%, um, as well as paired with a, a polyethylene glycol wax, very polar wax. And mix these up under standard um, conditions and standard mixing conditions, standard temperature, uh, to form our adhesives that I'm going to be talking about for the remainder of the talk. So I'll be referring back to this, this formulation table just changing out the PLA tackifier to investigate the differences. One of the most important things you look at in a new formula of an adhesive is its pot life and how stable it is in viscosity over um, time when held at a typical processing temperature. So we took our material, took our adhesive formula, and uh, you can see the initial viscosity, 15,000 millipascal seconds and then held that at typical processing temperatures for 24 hours and saw only about a 4% drop in the viscosity over that time period. So these are stable systems, um, very stable pot life. The next question is how well do these materials, how well do these adhesives bond different substrates? And what we did was looked at the overlap shear strength of our adhesives on a variety of materials. And what PLA brings to the system is uh, 
in some cases, a, a doubling or tripling of the overlap shear strength on steel. Um, these, are, these are tough materials. They, they perform well when bonded to polar substrates like metal and wood. Um, and they perform well on, on PMMA as well um, in comparison to, to an EVA control adhesive. These all failed in a cohesive manner. Um, where we do see uh, PLA performing a little differently is on a nonpolar substrate. Uh, not surprisingly, you don't see that same, that same benefit because, again, PLA is a very polar molecule, uh, very polar material, and does not bond a nonpolar substrate as well as a control. Another important parameter to investigate a new adhesive is in adhesive failure temperature testing. So we have a, a peel adhesive failure temperature or PAFT uh, mode of failure where um, we, have, we have a bonded sample that is put in an oven and the temperature is ramped up and the temperature at which failure occurs is activated by a switch and noted. There's two modes of, of failure for this test, two modes of testing. One is peel, where you have all of the stress localized to a single bond line. The other is shear adhesive failure temperature, where that stress is spread out over the entire bond area. And what, that, what you typically see is a lower temperature of failure in the peel mode than you do in the shear, as evidenced by the EVA control that we used here. Um, showing about a 10 degree C difference in the peel versus the shear modes. What PLA brings to the system is an improved peel adhesion, fa adhesion failure temperature in that it's about equivalent to the shear adhesion failure temperature. Another item that we tested out with our adhesives is in chemical resistance, where we took pieces of our adhesive and immersed them in canola oil over seven days and then tracked the weight percent pickup or the oil swell over that time period and <coughs> compared that to some control uh, materials. We have an industrial hot melt adhesive, general purpose hot melt adhesive sticks, and a control EVA formulation. We compared those to the PLA formulations and saw a much lower oil uptake, much, much, uh, much improved oil resistance to uh, that swelling. Just to highlight uh, the features that PLA brings to hot melt adhesives, um, we have an improved overlap shear strength to wood, metal, and other polar polymers. We have an improved peel adhesion failure temperature we have an improved solvent and oil resistance. These materials also enable formulation flexibility in that they're compatible with common polyols and other polyesters. In addition, these materials are bio-based and they have uh, indirect food contract contact approval. Thank you for coming to the talk. Uh, happy to answer some questions.